All right, is it is it in my mouth yet? How do I smell today? All right, you ready? Whatever. Have you heard of Yin Min Blue? This has been something that I have noticed more and more and more. Well, I'm gonna say it's a new color, but that's not entirely true. Yin Min Blue, if you haven't heard of it, is actually a new pigment. Now that's a big deal. There are lots of times where there are kind of like new colors that come out, but most of the time they're just mixes of other already existing pigments, but there's a new pigment. What's the BFD? What is this blue found discovery we wanna talk about today? It's called Yin Min Blue based off of the chemical compounds that make make it up. It's kind of abbreviated. Now, I would um, tell you what they are, but I can't pronounce them, so Adam's just gonna put them right here. Now, you might also see that it's spelled a couple different ways. Now, because these are based on like elements, you can spell it yin min, y-i-n, m-i-n, or there's this like this other version where it's capital Y, capital I, little m, or little n, big M, little n, it's so confusing. Oh, why can't anything be easy? Why am I making a whole video on a new pigment? We don't get a lot of new stuff in the art industry. We really don't. Many years ago, I was at uh, NAMTA, which is the National Art Material Trade Association show, and the highlight that year, okay, and this is nothing against the product, it's, it's more against the people. That's even worse, isn't it? Prismacolor now had a 36-piece pencil set. Before, you had to choose between 24 and 48. There's not a lot of new things out there in art, not a lot of new options in art, especially when you're dealing with a primary color. I mean, I've come up here and I've said like, you don't need certain colors. So some of you guys are thinking like, you're gonna do a whole video on a color when you just told me uh, you don't need every color. Some of you are gonna say, you're just trying to sell me this color. We're gonna do a little mini prove it in this. Do you, can you find the music? Do the music. I'm gonna prove to you right now that I'm not trying to sell this to you. I can't. It's not available. You can't get it. It's not commercially made right now. But I've got friends in, in colorful places, if you know what I mean. My friend Steve Patterson that um, owns Matisse Derivan got his hands on some Yin Min and made a small batch of it. And he sent me a tube and I just kind of wanted to show it to you guys. Yin Min Blue, or Oregon Blue as Matisse is calling it. They're calling it Oregon Blue because it was actually discovered at Oregon State University by accident. They were researching new materials to be used in electronic applications and like some shit burned and blue came out. Isn't that like, that never happens to me. It's somewhere in between a cobalt blue and an ultramarine blue on its kind of like uh, shade and tone. Um, but it has unique working properties. If you want to get this shade, you might be able to, you know, meander it, like adding a little bit of crimson to your cobalt or this, this, and that. But remember, this is its own pigment. You can't mix for certain things. You can't mix for opacity. You can't mix for brilliance. And I'll tell you that a lot of times artists seek after single pigmented uh, paints because when you mix colors, it will dull them down a little bit. Have I talked for four hours and not done anything? Let's do something. Okay, so cobalt blue, Yin Min Blue, or Matisse as they have it, Oregon Blue, and Ultramarine Blue. All right, here's that Yin Min. Also, it's permanent and believed to be extremely light fast. However, we can simulate um, light fastness, but you never really know until you've had it, and we just figured this out in like 2009. The reason that it's coming up now is because it is getting closer and closer to being commercially available. And there are a lot of applications for this paint outside of artist uses um, that make it pretty exciting. It will have special light refraction. Refraction? The way that the pigment interacts with light, it's gonna do uh, like a lot for like house painting because it is going to do a better job at reflecting like those UV lights so that things don't heat up in the summer as easily. Oh, that's way too much science for this. I need a drink. This is a fairly opaque color, all right? And it's actually, I, I, just, I just know that on the camera, it, you can't see the brilliance as well. It's a brilliant blue. And some of the things that I wanna do is just show you, well, what, what will it look like if I add some white to it? Okay, that's what we're gonna do first. And then we're gonna see what kind of purple we can mix, because we know that purple can be difficult to mix. Now for me, this is a little bit where the magic happens. This is where we can really see it, its color really shine. It's a very, very brilliant shade of blue um, that's opaque and mixes nicely. Now I'm going to try to see what kind of purples I get. Let's go into our Yin Min Blue and uh, Alizarin Crimson and see what we get, okay? Well, that's kind of nice. It's got a, a reasonable tinting strength. It's not like gonna be like a phthalo color where it's gonna just be so 
extremely powerful in, in, in dominating your colors. Really nice, really nice. It's gonna be, whenever it is available, just another option for you to have, and options are good. It's nice to have options. It's nice to have that authority. You know, I talk about this a lot. You don't need anything as long as you like what you have. You know, you might just be just fine with cobalt blue, but isn't it nice to know that there are actually new options coming out? It's not just a mix of the old Shiz, good schnitz and Gruben. Now I asked my buddy Steve, I said, when will it be commercially available? And he told me um, it will be a while. If he was to sell this tube of paint at this current time, it would have to be like twice the price of the most expensive paint you know, like a Series 7, you know, it would be way, way expensive, but this is a man-made item. It's expensive now because it's rare, but it won't be rare forever. And right now, it's pretty precious. It's like me, pretty precious. When this comes out, are you going to be wanting to try it? Are you going to be willing to experiment with your palette? Is this new pigment, not a new color, something that is worth getting excited about, or am I just wasting everybody's time? Tell me, but be nice. You can be a little mean. It excites me. I don't get excited over a lot. Let me tell you, it is hard to get this excited. It is so hard. I want everybody to, you know, work hard and play hard, you know, and I want them to get uh, Instagram uh, so they can follow me. It might not Jerry. What? Speaking of Instagram, uh, I actually got an extra tube or two of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking I might want one of you guys to have it to try. So how are you going to get it? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's going to be on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, I'm going to put out there a way for you guys to have a chance to win a tube of this very rare stuff. And the biggest thing is that there is no reason to hoard this. It's very precious now because it's extremely rare, but if you hoard it, it's just going to lose value. So I hope that whoever does win a tube of this um, will do something and maybe that will be part of the incentive. What will you do with your blue? So Yin Min Blue, just for you. Yeah. Oh, was that everything this time? You want me to smush the art? Let's smush the art. The reveal. Oh, I see Darth Vader. I see Darth Vader. Oh, I gotta give him Sith eyes. I'm hoping they're right about it being inert, but it, it's it's inert. Um, otherwise, I'd be dead because I tried this yesterday. It tastes better than the Ultramarine. It does. It's a little less tangy, and I like that.